Hi everyone, Apprentice Alex here. Uh, today I'm doing something a little different with this video. Uh, recently I put out a call on my social media asking for people to post some of their favorite uh, their favorite swords from uh, uh, fiction and folklore. I am personally a uh, really big proponent in teaching through fantasy, and I've mentioned it in past videos that you know, fantasy and sword and sorcery had a huge influence on me and are a big part of the reason that uh, I do what I do now. So now I've uh, I've taken five pics from people, what people sent me on social media, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about their construction. And this isn't just like a, oh, look at that ridiculous fantasy thing. This is, you know, talking about what works, what doesn't in the real world, and also using it as an opportunity to teach about the construction of swords and what makes a good sword design versus a not so good sword design. Um, so I hope you have some fun. So I hope people have some fun with this video, and I hope you learn something from it too. And also, it might expose people to a new fantasy property that they've uh, they've never heard of. Now, uh, again, I only picked five of the uh, of the things that people sent me. There were a ton of stuff that people sent me, and if people like this video, I'll definitely do more. But um, in the uh, so if you don't see one that you picked, you know. Just it, watch the video, and uh, you know if I end up doing another one, then maybe I'll I'll, uh, I'll get tears. Anyway, um, like I said, I I think I mentioned earlier, but I'll it's worth repeating. Uh, I've selected um, five that kind of run the gambit between kind of rooted in reality and uh, kind of very outlandish and very fantasy. So uh, let's take a look. Sorry, I have very low uh, low tech solutions for this high tech problem here. So up first we have the sword Brotherhood from Final Fantasy X. Um, really, really cool visual design. Very striking. I actually really like um, some of the hilt construction on here. One thing that you can see, uh, it's got the classic uh, Japanese wrapping that you'll have to forgive me, I forget the name for off the top of my head. Um, but it also, the, the blaze design, so you can clearly see that it's indexed. Uh, you've probably heard the term index before, uh, if you've watched Forge and Fire. Uh, Doug and Jay comment on it a lot. Um, and Dave as well. Um, indexing refers to how well a, uh, a blade maintains its, uh, its position in your hand. So you can see my little knife here if you look down in the corner where my camera is um this blade indexes so i can always tell where the cutting edge is because if i hold it like this then the cutting edge is that way if it's like this that i know where that cutting edge is and with that palm swell there again if i turn it around i know where my cutting edge is at all times so i think that's that's cool that that's that that actually has the indexing in there um i don't like this neural right up at the top this big bolt but um, I don't think that it adds a lot to the aesthetic design and it you know, prevents a potential handhold there. Um, another thing about the, uh, this design that I like is that, um, you know, well, well, not perfect, like this spike down here, I don't like pointing towards the end user one right here. Um, it, it would be very hard. A lot, a big thing that you run into with a lot of fantasy sword designs is that it would be very easy for the hand to slide up onto the cutting edge. Um, which uh, this one, this one really doesn't have that problem. That I can really appreciate about it. Um, again, uh, I'd remove this spike and I probably round off this point, but overall. Kind of the back end of this blade, you know, pretty nice. I don't like the tassel, but that's more of a... That's, there are certainly historical examples of people attaching, ta especially in places like China, attaching tassels to their uh, the end of their blades. Um, now let's go on to the blade itself. Um, the main body of the blade is actually a pretty basic design. You can see there's a little bit of a fuller along here, which is cool. Um, the big, like, fish hook at the end here, I mean, there are hook swords in history, uh, things like the Falks from Faya, 
um, have hook-like designs. But this kind of aggressive hook really doesn't do a lot. If someone came to me and said, I want a functional version of the Sword Brotherhood from Final Fantasy X, um, then I'd say, okay, do you want me to engrave the hook pattern, make it, you know, part of the aesthetic, or do you want me to make, you know, draw the hook, pull the hook down and out so that it's more of a functional uh, siege hook in design? Um, overall, it's probably bigger, probably thicker and heavier than I'd want an actual sword to be, but we'll say that the people in Final Fantasy X are a little stronger on average than us and give that a pass. So, again, overall, I think there's some really fun elements to this design, and there's actually, there's more elements that work than would appear at, at a quick glance. Um, there's still some stuff that's purely in the realm of fantasy, which is cool because it looks great, and also Final Fantasy X is a great game. You should go play it if you haven't. Prepare for all the Christian guilt complex. All right. Up next, we have the Fate anime series take on Caliburn, the Sword of Selection. Uh, everybody's probably heard of Excalibur. Caliburn was actually the name of the sword that Arthur drew from the stone that declared him King of the Britons. Um, he later received Excalibur from the Lady of the Lake, who some believe was the, uh, the Celtic god of the forge, Bridget. Um, but anyway, right now we're looking at this design of Caliburn. First of all, this is actually a pretty gorgeous uh, longsword design. Um... Obviously, there there's a fantasy aesthetic to it, but in terms of just the, in terms of just raw design, this is really nice. Um, you've got a nice broad fuller right down the middle with the uh, engraving. Um, I'm I'm not sure with, with this size sword. I'm not sure of the wrapped kind of extra grip area like you'd have on some great swords or Zweihand. There's. Um, you know, pretty pretty classic curved cruciform guard. Um, really, the only things, if I w again, if I was going to take a commission that I want a functioning version of the Fate Sword Caliburn, the only things that I'd really uh, change is I'd take, you see the, the hourglass shape here? I would move this down a little bit more so that it sits in the, the center of the palm better. Because as it stands right now, this grip would want to push the hand towards the middle of the grip. And I'd probably make the, the pommel a little larger and heavier to help counterbalance the blade. But overall, it's a nice longsword design. And that's the kind of thing that would be very little would have to change to make a truly combat-ready version of that sword. Alright, up next. Ooh boy, here comes the memes. This is Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. Did you say Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker? Why, yes, I did say Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. Alright, memeing aside, um, <laughs> the Warcraft games are ridiculous in their weapon designs, and I kind of love them for that. Um, the first thing I want to point out with what works here. In game, it's a one-handed sword, but I love the fact that they've given this nice long handle for this thick, heavy blade. Um, really, this should be wielded with two hands, not one hand. But that's besides the point. Um, but I actually, I actually like that. It almost gives it the feel of like a miniature pole arm. Um, this whole split blade design is something you see in a lot of uh, a lot of fantasy. Um, it looks cool. It really does. But I am. I can't, I don't know, I, I, I need to find, see if there's any historical precedent for it, but other than putting in some notches as for, on the, near the tip for like a sword breaker or something utilitarian like a pry bar, I can't think of any. I could be wrong there. Um, as usual, there's there's blade that you're, with Warcraft, there's blade that your hand can run right into. Uh, there's heavy bolts that would hot spot like crazy on your hands um a thing again the inside of the the inside of the pommel is sharpened that's ridiculous um not a good sword design honestly this the the other one the with brotherhood i was able there's a there's enough there that works that i could say yes we can get you something functional that is in the spirit of this this is kind of all this is this is a little too far out there for that um but it looks really cool, and I can't deny that. Honestly, it looks almost like if you cut off that if you cut off the handle and you know added a, like a pistol grip down here, it would look like some kind of sci-fi railgun. Um, 
the uh, oh, there's there's just so much wrong here, um, and yet I don't care because it looks cool. <laughs> but yeah, uh, please don't come and ask me for a combat functional Thunder Fury, but it does look really cool. And if you have a Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Wind Seeker, good on you. Man, I wish that blade had been more relevant for longer. Um, Power Creep in World of Warcraft is real. Uh, all right. Up next, we have the Soul Reaver from Legacy of Cain. This actually got requested a couple of times, so uh, I'm a uh, few people are going to be happy that I included this one. Um, this is uh, obviously a Flamber style blade. Um, actually, a really cool one. It really, really bears re the blade itself bears a lot of resemblance to uh, the the Javanese Chris sword. Um, as far as the handle construction goes, um, this is, honestly, this is a little more Euro European in design than the, than the Javanese blade design implies, but, uh, the handle itself isn't too bad. I don't really like profiling on it. Really, the only, the only pro functional problem with this blade design is is the the uh the guard the way that it's um it it's it's styled to look like they're they're sharpening down on the bottom and that those aggressive angles but really with a little with a little bit of tweaking of the guard geometry you could absolutely make a functional version of this sword which you know could be really cool i don't have the skills to to uh carve out the skull but i'm sure there are people out there that do and uh it could be something anyone want to do a collaborative build that could be really cool um yeah uh also i would definitely add a, some kind of a a pommel for counterbalance um hard to see on here if this blade is fullered or not but i'd probably add a fuller to bring weight down that is a broad version of a of a flambert's crease blade um yeah, it's like th this is one. Of, this is one of those those moments where I I love when a game designer goes does something like, all right, what's a really cool sword that's real? All right, let's just add some like gothic horror elements to it and just send it on its way. Just a little aesthetic flair, not too deviating too far from the actual design. Just it, it's. Again, this this is so close to just a aesthetically cool but functional blade design that I, I have to give them props for that. You know, this, this is one of those things where if you were an immortal vampire and didn't have to worry, had the strength, you didn't have to worry about counterbalance on a sword and all that. You could do something like that, no problem. Um, the blade does the blade geometry itself is one that proved very functional in history. Um, and I think. And, oh, yes, here we go. Thundercats, ho! Um, alright. Uh, pretty simple broadsword design. Um, believe it or not, there is some historical precedence for having a, uh, the, the medallion, although it would probably be closer down in, down to centering the actual cross guard here. Um, it's a pretty basic sword design, honestly, but very iconic. Uh, one thing I really love here is that all of the uh, all of the spikes on the guard are facing away from the end user. Um, the the it's not pointed back towards you, which is you know a good thing. You don't want to be poking yourself. Um, it's like you put something heavy in that pommel, it could work. You know, just diamond ground. Uh, it's a simple blade design with you know just enough iconic features to really make it cool. Like I said, you know you could absolutely have this medallion here, but I like I said, if I was gonna make one, I'd move the medallion down to center in the cross guard. Literally the only change I'd make if I was going to go with a uh, a um a, like a I want to carry this into battle functional equivalent to this. Um. Yeah, maybe a little, maybe a little bit more rounding out in some of these corners. That's about it. Like it's it's a solid design. 
And that is five. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, like, comment, subscribe, that whole deal. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed it, please let me know. And like I said, there's a bunch more swords that people recommended. So if people want to see me do more of these, uh, let me know. I definitely want to talk more about fantasy stuff. I definitely want to talk more about blade design in general. And uh, again, really hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Hi, everybody. Apprentice Alex here, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you're interested in learning more about the details involved in the craft of bladesmithing, please check out our main channel at youtube.com slash oldworldironworks. My teacher Bear already has a couple of great tutorial videos up there, which are a little older, but more is on the way. If you're interested in supporting the shop, then of course, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, share the videos around. Um, you can find us on our web store at oldworldironworks.net, or you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash oldworldironworks. Um, again, means the world to us. Thank you so much. Links in the description below.